about evil things that people do. That word evil, it just means that the things that people do. And the thing that you know what to do is we go back and we read God's Word and we look at it for guidance and wisdom, but the wisdom tells us that's not the only thing that we need to be studying. So just be very careful then how you live. Here's what Paul literally says. He says, watch carefully. One person looks at those truths of God's word that God does not want you to live your life as a slave to fear. Do not worry, do not be afraid. You know that it's the Lord Himself who calls the hours of our days, and if the time comes for us to be called home, there's not a thing we can do to stop it. And you know that He promises that no matter what He brings into your life, He will always use it for your good. So a Christian looks at those things, and when people talk about the function, and suicide needs to get away. To make sure that if we live in faith, we don't think the Lord our God is oppressed by the opposition that are bad and that we need to take the right to 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 the That is studying God's word, and then study your decisions again and again. Ask yourself how well you're going to this. Am I acting in love and in faith? Or you send your children off to school, and they come home and they start telling you stories about their friends, and you realize that their friends have struggles and backgrounds that you never imagined in the Things like male and female, One person looks out at that world and they think, hey, about those people who saw one of them, and God says, don't walk in the ways of the wicked because sooner or later you're going to be standing where the sinners stand and sitting down with them. But, but if you go along with the world, it can change you slightly, slowly, in ways that you just don't see coming. So they decided they're going to take their children out of that world and start them in the second place. They were not And they to live our faith as bright, shining cities on a hill so that lost people can see the truth and come to know the hope that we have. So they decide that every night they're going to talk with their kids about everything they see and do their best to equip them for life in that broken world. Who's doing the right Thank 
coming back to those things of God that you don't study them and then study your life and your decisions and your motives. That's the observation that you kind of see yourself. So remember what Paul said. Therefore, do not be foolish. When, when people in our lives hurt us, when they make foolish decisions again and again that just tie our patients and we just wear out and get sick of it, but it's not just that God's patience doesn't wear out and it keeps doing it. It's that God loves to, God's favorite thing is to gather his people together again and pray for the thousandth time, I forgive all of the things. You are my child. My love will never leave you, and one day you will be with me forever in heaven. That makes no sense. In a selfish and self-centered way, The Lord says that the people have always been. The world has killed itself in the Bible for people. If you watch the fight, Even when we started to come to agreement on some of those things, that within the family of faith in the Christian church, we always treat each other with love and gentleness, kindness and respect. And in the Bible world, that takes his family and he brings them closer together. Make the most out of that opportunity. Where the parents struggle to decide how much they send their children out into the world and how much they try to protect them at home, we need to make those decisions, understanding that the real problem in this world isn't just the general moral decay that goes on around us or the confusion that so often happens around sex and identity and everything else these days. The real problem is that people are disconnected from their parents. And so, whatever decision you make about what your children do, you know what you do. Look at 
want to make the most of those opportunities to live in God's love and truth together with my wife and my children and the people that I love so dearly, even with those people that I don't love. Yet. This is the encouragement that this is called for. How we continue to do that? He says, do not get drunk down the line, which leads to the body. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to God never condemns us for all of us. That is in the song that he gets lined and lined in the heart of man. Jesus first miracles to be water in the wine. God sanctifies the use of wine on our altar and believe me. God never once condemns alcohol as a food. He always condemns something else. But why do you? Hey, in the middle of this section, we're talking about living as, as wise children of God in the broken world. Why does he call out this one thing?
When Martin Luther had a hit put out on his life by the leader of the church and the leader of the state, he and his buddies would gather together and sing to each other, A mighty fortress is our God, our fleshly shield and weapon. When Paul and Silas were sitting in prison with his Roman cuffs on their ankles, they sang hymns of, of thanks to God for all of his grace and love, and even the, the, the prison guards wanted to know the Savior that they knew, so they were able to baptize him that night. When King David was on the run for his life, not only from King Saul, but also from his own son, who was from the church, he wrote and said, Beautiful God for God. When you sing those words of God, the Spirit is going to be saved. But then you might not change the world around you while he's like so, but he'll be Thank you for that. 